All right, I think we are ready to get started. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Unity Info session. Uh, my name is Dan Butchko. I'm the founder and, and CEO of Playcrafting. Uh, we here at Playcrafting are, uh, you know, representing one of the biggest communities of independent game developers in the U.S. Um, and a huge way in which we support that community and more importantly grow that community is through education. Um, and so we started this Learn Unity in Eight Weeks course now five years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, and in that short time, we've had over 200 students take this course. Um, they've made over 700 games uh, and we've run the course itself uh, just under 20 times uh, between San Francisco and New York and a couple times up in Boston. Um, you know, the course itself was started as a way uh, for folks to go ahead, get started making games as quickly as possible using Unity, which we all know is uh, the most popular and used uh, game engine for independent developers and making a lot of uh, headway in terms of larger studios as well. We wanted to launch a course that, you know, got you making something and playing something that you made as quickly as possible. And so that's where Learn Unity in Eight Weeks really is, is the first course that we had had ever, you know, created at that point. And it's been our most popular one uh, by a long shot ever since then. Um, this is the first time that we're ever offering it online. So uh, no longer are we confined to a specific space. Uh, you don't have to be in New York or Boston or San Francisco to be there. Um, we're really, really excited to have taken um, all of this great energy, all of these years of experience and putting this course together and uh, offering it in the online space um, and giving you a way to go ahead and, and learn how to use the engine and, and most importantly, make some games uh, in a short period of time that you can go ahead and, and play yourself and show off to your friends and family um, some, some cool stuff that you've made. So thank you so much for being here. I'm just here to, to say hello and sort of give some context since we're so excited that this is the first time that we're ever doing this online. Um, tonight we have our instructor for the course itself and then we also have some former students who are going to show off some of the projects that they've made as well. Um, so with that being said, that's all I'm here for. Um, wanted to quickly introduce our instructor. So Will Delventhal is a, an awesome uh, independent developer who's based in San Francisco. Uh, he's taught this course for us uh, several times um, and we thought that he would be the perfect match for our first online version of it. Um, he's also a huge cat lover and I'm sure we'll um, talk about that a lot in, in going through some of the work that he's done as well. Um, but thank you so much for being here, Will. Um, go ahead, you know, uh, we're here to, uh, to answer any questions you have uh, while we are here. Will will walk you through sort of his background, how the course works, and then our former students will show you some of their work. But we're here to, uh, to make sure that any of your questions are answered too. Even though I'm leaving, uh, Evangeline is here as well. Evangeline, go ahead and give everybody a wave. Um, she'll be here to answer some questions at the end as well, any like logistics stuff. Uh, the chat is live down below. If you have any specific questions that come up along the way, go ahead and, uh, and drop it into the Q&A box. That's what we're here for. And the course itself is starting in a couple of weeks. So uh, hopefully you can join us. Um, and, uh, and we'd love to have you become a part of our growing network of, uh, of developers who have gone through this course. Um, with that being said, Will, take it away. All right. Well, thank you for the kind and cat-themed introduction. Uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. How's everyone doing today? I hope you are well. I am going to, uh, so I'm Willem Delventhal. I'm going to be the instructor for this course. As Dan said, I have instructed uh, a few of these now. We started the San Francisco chapter um, and have been, I've been one of the consistent instructors there. So if you're in San Francisco or the Bay Area, you may have met me or may know me. Otherwise, hello again. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and run us through the presentation in which I will talk a little bit about um, what we're actually going to be doing in the next three months. Okay. All right. So uh, this is, as Dan was talking about, our Learn Unity in Eight Week Boot Camp. It is a heck of a lot of fun. You are going to learn an absurd amount in eight weeks. 
uh, we are expecting absolutely no programming experience. We will be learning to program and we will be getting you to a game development status in just two weeks and then into a really hardcore status in three months. Uh, Evangeline, do you want to cover this one? Um, yeah, sure. So, um, hello. Yes, I think I'm off mute. Uh, yeah, so playcrafting. We are, I mean, Dan sort of mentioned this, but we are a community of uh, game developers. We do a variety of things. I myself, I'm the events manager, so I, I don't really do a lot of the designing games or anything of that, but um, essentially like once these students um, create their games, they like to show off at the events that we do host, such as like expos and demo nights and this, this big convention that we do every year called Play NYC. Um, so we do a variety of stuff and this component, this educational component is the, um, is part of like the class initiatives that we do. So yeah, that's play crafting in a nutshell. Awesome. I will, uh, if you guys are nice enough to me during the course, I will bug them enough so we can do an online game night and, uh, and show off everybody's games to the community. Okay, so uh, first things first, why should you listen to me? Let's build a little bit of personal validity. So my name is Willem Dumfell, as I said, I've been in the game design field um, pretty much forever. I remember uh, I used to, instead of book reports, make board games, because to me, I thought that was cheating. My teachers loved it, A plus all around. I just got to make games, it was the best. Um, and then I had this like fateful day where I kind of accidentally sold a game uh, a flash game, of course, to addictinggames.com for a whopping $500 when I was 15. And I was like, oh my God, I can make money off of games. And I've been in the game design industry since then. Um, so professional experience for you guys. I started out at Lumi Kids, which is an internal startup at Lumosity. So basically we were building brain training games for two to six year olds. That was intense and interesting. I got to tell you that. Moved into the Lumosity main product where I built a couple of games for them and then left and started my own business uh, Mew and Me, which is, as Dan mentioned, video games for cats that actually study them scientifically, teach you and the world more about cats at large. Give it a try. It's free if you have a cat. Um, and then, of course, I've made just an ungodly number of personal games. I don't know how many Ludum Dares I've entered and game jams and yada yada. So who knows how many games I've actually built at this point. Uh, you can see these are some of my games. The top right there is Lemmy Kids. Bottom right is Feel the Beat, which is one of my favorites. It was an 80s themed rhythm training game. Um, in the bottom there is Mew and Me. And on the left is that fateful, tiny uh, flash game that I sold. Uh, it was called Quick Draw Rangers and it was freaking awesome, if I do say so myself. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of audience participation because that always makes these things more fun. I'm gonna have to figure out how I can look at the chat while I'm doing this. So feel free to write in the chat, what is everybody's favorite games? I want to hear it. Everyone, write in the chat. I'm going to, Matt, since, since you can talk while people are doing this, here we go, here we go. Okay, Journey, fantastic choice, old school JRPGs. Is that, I, I think I got your number. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock you in a second here. Monument Valley, also incredible. RPGs are good. Death Stranding, interesting choice. I, don't, I didn't get into it there, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That is a heck of an art form there. Zelda, Ocarina of Time, classic, fantastic choice. League of Legends, very good. Twins Odyssey, very good. Okay, we got a lot of good options here. So my personal favorite, and one of the reasons I'm even in the game development field, is, well, is Chrono Trigger. Oh my god, the person who said JRPGs, I'm hoping this is why you said it. Holy cow, Chrono Trigger opened my mind. Um, you know, before that, games were a fun, silly thing that I like to do on the side, and then I just got sucked into this game. For anyone who doesn't know, it is uh, this incredible, uh, weird uh, RPG just ahead of its time, built by the team who uh, created a lot of the Final Fantasy series. Artists, uh, the artists for this project were a lot of the same people who do Dragon Ball Z. You can see the effects here. It looks very much like we're playing Dragon Ball Z. Had this crazy multi-ending branching system. I, I beat this game so hard that I got a secret ending where I got to meet all the developers, where there were little characters of the developers in the game. Oh my God, I loved this game so much. Um, and it like really, it put me on the path. So all of you guys, I want you to hold on to your favorite games because that's why we're here. We're trying to instill some of that sense of wonder and joy that we got from our favorite games into the world. Okay, so I'm not sure how much is getting blocked by everybody right now. I don't know Legend of Dragoon, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> All right, so why should you take this course? 
Well, it's, it's, there are a couple of key reasons, uh, key strengths that we have in our Unity course with Playcrafting. So the first one is just Unity is used by basically everybody. So it is by far the most used game engine in the industry. 62% of game developers in the industry use Unity. Uh, if you're trying to compare that to Unreal, I think the latest stats put it at 15%. So uh, Unity is just completely crushing the game. If you're talking about the most valuable skill set to add to your arsenal, Unity is it. It's also an incredible boot camp mentality. You can go from not even knowing how to program to actually building your own games in eight weeks. And when I say eight weeks, I really mean two, because we're going to finish our first game together in just two weeks. You're going to be a game developer in two weeks. This is also one of the only courses where we're going to go over some game design theory. So we're going to do things like paper prototyping, talk about game loops. We're not going to go super, super heavy into it. The purpose of this is to get you game developing, but we also want you to understand why some games are fun and why some games are not fun. And then, of course, powerful hands-on experience. So there are all kinds of online uh, Unity classes out there, but this is going to be the only one where you and I get to interact and actually talk fix problems together, uh, get feedback from me on why I think your game is awesome, um, et cetera. All right, here we go. So yeah, as I said, some people will ask why Unity and not Unreal. Well, the very simple answer is that Unity is way, way, way more popular. Far more people use it. I personally prefer Unity, although honestly, I have no problem with Unreal. I think it's a perfectly good game engine by itself. A fun factoid for you, the reason people think that Unreal is a prettier game engine is because they automatically slap on lens glare and a uh, soft effect into, their, into every one of their games that you start. So if you make a new game, your game will instantly have a lens flare. Unity does that too, you just have to enable it yourself, which means there are more games out there built in Unreal that have lens flares, so people think Unreal makes prettier games. Perfect marketing, it's incredible. All right, course overview. So like I said, you're gonna finish your first functional game in Unity in just two weeks. It's gonna be a very simple game, but you will be a game developer in just two weeks. You'll leave the course with three completed games. These will all be very simple, all intended to get you through a couple of core lessons. And you're going to leave with the beginnings of your dream game, which we're gonna see from two of our students in a second here. You're gonna learn the basics of C-sharp coding. You are not gonna be a code god, but you'll be a code person, you'll know how to do enough coding to get by and to continue to learn and grow your skill set, and you will get a basic principle understanding of the game design cycle. One way or another, you're going to leave this course an actual game developer. The curriculum, if you'd like to take a screenshot of this or write this down, if you're worried about anything in particular, these are all of the topics we're going to cover on the weeks we're actually going to cover them. Uh, so largely, we are going to get into the Unity IDE, do some simple coding, uh, talk about some game design, do a couple of the nitty gritty things like the particles, physics, uh, AI logic, getting the, oh, I put particles and physics twice. Didn't mean to do that. AI logic is supposed to be all week sixes, but we'll really cover particles and physics. Um, we'll talk about the asset store, prototyping, etc. This is the walkthrough of what we're actually going to be doing. So yes. The, what I say is the craziest thing about this course is that you can go from absolutely no experience, never having built a game in your life to being a game developer in two weeks. It's really pretty intense. The number of students we have put through this now are, um, it, it is like, as Dan was saying, we've hit 200 now. It's incredibly heartwarming to see the number of people and the incredible projects that people come up with come out of this course. All right. More, uh, more audience participation time. Tell me in the comments right here, why are you here? Um, why are you listening to me talk right now? Why do you want to take this course? Most importantly, why do you want to build games? I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Type quick. I'll talk about me while we wait. Um, so I personally just love like delivering joy, delivering fun that moment when you prototype a new game and you bring it over to a play tester and put it down in front of them and they can't stop playing it is like the greatest moment in the world. I just like can't get enough of that feeling. Um, and I also think games are just incredibly powerful. Game design is essentially the study of human motivation. How do we get somebody to do something for a prolonged period of time? Because not all games are fun, right? And yet we still spend hours and hours doing them. All right, fascinated with how they work. Good, I'm making games for a long time. 
who wants to move into the games industry, excellent. So you're going to rock this course. The programming sections, you're going to breeze through it. You're going to be able to focus on that game development and make some really awesome games. Fantastic. Um, limitless imagination, absolutely. I read this, this beautiful post the other day that was like, why don't we have the same romanticism about games as we do about books? We talk about curling up next to the fire or curling up in bed with a good book, but you can absolutely do the same thing with a good game. I'm sure you've all had that experience. Um, I used to live in this little like cottage type thing with a fireplace and I could remember playing Metroid Prime on my GameCube with the fire roaring next to me and rain coming down on the cottage. And it's like glorious, you know, games are an art form and they're slowly being viewed more and more like that. Prototype my own idea is better. Good, we'll definitely go over that. Uh, started writing and you said it, good. Um, trying to learn this for a long time, struggling motivation. Well, I will definitely keep you motivated. We are going to get through a whole lot in eight weeks. And narrative designer, really cool, really cool. Very curious what you create as your dream game. Good, a lot of good reasons to be here. So let's go over what we're actually going to build. The games are strategically chosen to hopefully be interesting, but also um, be realistic about what you guys are going to be able to accomplish in these two week chunks. So this first game, we used to do something much more complicated, but now I keep the first two weeks very simple. We create a pachinko clone. So if you are unfamiliar with pachinko, it's kind of like pinball, a ball falls down from the top, it bounces around stuff, and then it falls into a number of holes that are worth different points. Um, you get multiple balls and you just drop them wherever you want at the top of the, at the, top of the screen. So we're gonna make a very simple pachinko clone. The vast majority of the programming is going to be automatically handled by Unity's physics engine. So we'll be looking at Unity physics. Um, all of the lessons that we will learn in this little pachinko clone, we will apply to future games. Uh, this is mostly just to get you into the game, into the experience. We'll finish this in two weeks. You'll have a finished game you can show to people and feel cool about. Game number two, I, I don't think a game design course would be complete without us making some kind of Mario clone, without us making some kind of platformer. So we're gonna make a cute little game about a duck who jumps around and lands on stuff and collects coins. Um, you will get some of the simples on more advanced input. You will get some very simple enemy AI. Um, you will do a little bit of programming and you will do level design. So we will be creating an actual level select where you can go to different levels, create a full game loop, talk about what makes games fun. Game number three, so those first two were both Unity 2D. For game number three, we'll step into Unity 3D. The uh, most like incredible thing about Unity 2D to 3D is that basically they're exactly the same thing. So the biggest point of project three is you're gonna go, okay, I've learned all this stuff in Unity 2D. I'm intimidated by 3D. Hold on a second, it's exactly the same thing. We're gonna make a fun horror game where you go collect a couple of things. Imagine Slender Man collecting pages where one monster follows you and does creepy stuff. Uh, and hopefully you can turn this into the next exciting Siren Head game or whatever the heck you want. Um, a couple of other things, we'll do some more complicated AI stuff and we will also learn how to, do, how to use the Unity Asset Store. One of the most powerful things about Unity is the Asset Store that is hundreds of thousands of people creating unique content such as 3D models or even game engines for you to import and use in your own projects. One of the things that separates a really advanced engineer from a really primitive engineer, the advanced engineer is totally willing and happy to use other people's work. All right, here's the, the most fun question, the most fun audience participation moment. What game have you always wanted to create? I want like the, the like four word synopsis. I don't need a paragraph down there. Um, so let's see, what's, what I, and leave these in the comment. I'm asking for participation right now. So write it down there. Uh, one of mine, for instance, I really want to make EB Nova, if anyone has ever played that game. It's like a top-down space trading game where you go trade and you get ships and then you fight and stuff. Um, but I want to take that and make a Battlegrounds game. Imagine like EB Nova where the universe is different every time and you got to trade and stuff and then you fight all the enemies and the world gets smaller. It'd be so cool. Okay, action adventure games about things cats do. I'm curious, write, write me a little bit more about that one. Uh, space Quest meets Zelda. Nice. Good. I like that. Roguelike narrative space exploration. Good. Good. I'm assuming you're the narrative guy. Game based on one of my books. Excellent. Some kind of RPG or something. Hidden folks. I don't know what that means. Tell me more. Multiplayer strategic action RPG. That sounds really cool. 
Skyrim meets the Salem Witch Trials. Whew, you're going to be touching, <laughs> you're touching some sensitive topic right there, but that's actually really cool. That's the kind of game where somebody tells me I get really excited. I want to hear more. Um, blend storytelling with competitive online PvP in a legit way. That's uh, also a really interesting idea. I personally fall in love with games because of their atmosphere, um, their um, you know, narrative, the whole like exploration of their universe. I love a game that really does that. Um, and I'd be curious to hear how you can do that with PvP. Philip, 100% Ludo narrative alignment. I don't know what that means, but it sounds amazing. Narrative cyberpunk game, storytelling and sign language. Okay, so these are all super cool projects. I'm gonna tell you a very big secret about our Unity course in relation to these projects. You probably won't make these games. <laughs> so the reality of most people's dream games is that they are humongous, right? Um, one of the most important lessons we are going to consistently talk about in this class is scope. If you haven't heard the term scope before, it just means how big and how long is this game? How long will it take me to build it? So uh, if you haven't built a game before, something you're going to understand very quickly is that games take like way longer than you'd think to create, just like anything, right? If you work in, I don't know, FinTech and you're doing like, uh, you're making bank software, you're, you know, that sounds like something that would take a long time to build. Games seem like this quirky, cute thing. They take a long time to build too. So your dream game is probably not gonna happen in the next eight weeks, but we will start it. So the whole idea is that we get you these three completed games so that you can feel like a game developer so that you have a backlog of projects to go back to, to look at examples of how stuff works, et cetera. And then in those last two weeks, we're gonna get you started on this dream game. We're gonna do some prototyping. Uh, one of the most important things to do when starting a new game is to find a couple of example games to base yourself off of because they will have already solved problems that you may not know how to solve. And then we're gonna prototype some interactions, some, um, some of the actual core loop of this game. And we're gonna talk about how your game might work and what might make it fun. And then we're gonna start programming it. So basically, I'm going to make you start your dream game, get two weeks into that game, and then hopefully at least get the core interaction, being able to move your character or whatever else uh, working so that you can continue your dream game and make it awesome over the next couple of months. Uh, I think that is about it on that, yeah. Uh, and then on the very last day, we are all going to show off our progress in these dream games so that you guys can start to build some community and get some support and some feedback on why your games are awesome. All right, let's talk about a little alumni work. So Patrick and Kyle, I have not met you guys before. You guys seem great. Matt here, uh, who we're gonna start with, actually was in one of my classes when I was a TA during my very first class. Um, and uh, I wound up working a little bit with him on Tone Painter here. He went from knowing absolutely nothing and, and being a sound designer to creating this really fascinating, like almost non-game game thing. So Matt, I'm gonna let you talk more than that. Great, uh, well thank you Willem, um, and thank you Evangeline, and thank you everybody for uh, sort of putting this together. I am uh, delighted to be able to sort of share my experience. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Good. All right. Got the thumbs up. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, I, I can vouch for uh, what Willem said at the beginning, uh, especially the part about um, uh, you, you can go from uh, absolutely knowing nothing to uh, releasing a game, because that's exactly what I did. Um, I, I took one year of programming in college, but that was like back when the earth was cooling. So that was a very long time ago. And it turns out that I thought that I didn't like programming and I learned now in retrospect, I just didn't like that particular teacher. Uh, it turns out that programming when it's taught well is really fun. Um, but uh, that's a long way of saying that I had basically no programming experience and I had a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth about programming. Uh, my background, I'm a, a composer and music producer, and I worked uh, for uh, Sony PlayStation uh, for about 10 years, uh, and now I teach at San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Um, so my background is very much in music and music, music for video games, and one of the things that um, has happened uh, uh, over the years is that um, I've, I've had a great opportunity to work on um, some really amazing games. Um, 
But as a composer, as a creative person, you're always doing that in the support of somebody else's sort of creative vision. So I saw this, you know, learning uh, how to how to make my own little game uh, as a, a sort of a, a crack in the door, a sort of way to way to get in and actually execute um, some of the creative ideas that I uh, have have thought of over the years. And wow, I wish someone would make a game like this. So even though you know I I, I had a wonderful opportunity to work on a bunch of games. Um, some of them were, you know, not, not really the kind of games that I play in my personal life. And so if you're working especially on a big AAA title over two or three or four years, and it's not really kind of in your, in the sweet spot of, you know, your, your creative world, um, it's, it's not ideal. And so, uh, I, I, um, pursued this, uh, uh, taking this class so that I could learn how to execute on some of those things. So I'm going to share with you one of the things uh, that I did, and it's called Tone Pool. I should tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, Willem is right. It's not really a game. And uh, <laughs> what it is, is I, I also, so as a composer, I also have continued to study uh, music and sound um, and uh, the therapeutic application of sound. It's something that I'm very interested in. So I actually am a certified sound practitioner, um, which means that uh, I'm from California. Um, so anyway, um, let me show you my screen. Um, let's see, give me just a moment. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share a little video that I made of Tone Pool um, so that you can kind of understand uh, a little bit about what it is. Can everybody see this here? Okay, and let me see. Um, okay. So I, I, I made this little three minute instructional video that shows you how to make a tone poem. So this is actually captured from the device. And uh, it's a, you can passively just listen to it. Now I, I put a little uh, icon on there so you can see where your finger is. Um, so you can actually remove those bowls uh, from, from the pool. Um, these, I'm clicking through the different presets that I've made, and they have uh, you know, different collections of bowls and ambiences. If you just want to listen to it passively, you can click outside of the pool. Um, and that'll turn on and off the user interface. Um, so these are some of the presets that we have, which you can customize. And if you go up to create, you can actually make your own, what we call a tone poem. So this is the tone painter window. So by dragging these different bolts and oh, you clicking on the butterfly will delete all of the bolts in the fountain. But uh, so if you drag a bunch of bowls in, you can sort of configure your own custom soundscape. And so all of these are actually bowls that I own. Uh, and that I use in my own composition and, and, and therapeutic music practice. Uh, you can also add ambiences like morning birds or rain, rainforest. So by combining all of these, um, you, you create your own, your own soundscape. You can also adjust the volume here. That's what the volume sliders are. This is the dynamic flow or, or a flow slider, so you can see how fast the water current is going. And then you can also choose a different stone um, for, the, for the fountain itself. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually saving the tone poem. Um, so this one that I just made, I'm going to call Nature. And then you click outside the, 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 the if you just want to enjoy it. But now nature shows up in my presets. And if I want to share it, I can click on share. I can use email or text, but Facebook, you can actually post directly to Facebook. Um, and then it just shows up in your feed uh, as a tone poem, which I'll show you here now. Once I've shared it, of course, I just shared this one only with me. Um, but now if I go to go to Facebook, I can click on um, Cool. Um, so, right. Uh, I guess I should just stop sharing and make sure I can see. Was everybody able to see that? Was that a clear?
presentation. Okay, great. Um, so, right. So I've also been uh, posting to here. Let me actually share again so I can show you my website uh, where you can actually share screen. Go back to here again. Okay, so on this website, if you go, this is where you can go. You can download the app for free. Now it's available for iOS and Android. So again, I went from absolutely knowing nothing to launching on two platforms. Uh, the um, the eight week Unity course was all I took. Now, by the way, if you go to Tone Poems here, um, I've listed all these Tone Poems, and if you click on any of these links, it will actually open in Tone Pool. Or if you don't have the app, it'll take you to the the download link. So um, anyway. Um, Pretty, pretty fancy. Uh, I, I, I also want to reemphasize what uh, what Willem is saying about scope because this, you know, this is actually kind of a small game, um, but it was uh, especially since it was my first game. It was it was a lot of effort, but I did, um, you know, I used it as an opportunity to kind of learn about all of this stuff, um, and uh, it was a very rewarding experience. And uh, I now have uh, over four thousand downloads. Uh, across the two platforms and so um, you know I mean and I didn't I did very little sort of advertising it's mostly words of word of mouth and I set up a Facebook page and stuff like that um, so that's been a really satisfying experience uh, the other thing uh, Willem I don't even know if I told you this part but um, I last semester taught unity at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music it was like an intro to unity course so I went from absolutely knowing nothing about programming and knowing nothing about unity to releasing a game on two platforms and actually teaching a course at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Um, so anyway, if anybody's interested in checking it out here, I'll just paste some links. Um, so that's the sound healing app. You just go to uval.com. That's Uncle Vector's Audio Lab. Um, and then uh, if you're interested in finding about, out about my music or the other stuff that I do for games, you can, you can check that out. Um, and I think that's, I, I think that kind of summarizes it. So uh, I guess I'll hand it back to you, Willem. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt is just, you know, he, I, I went in and I actually helped him with some of his engineering at some point after the class. Um, and he, you know, created the craziest solutions to some of his engineering problems. You know, <laughs> but he was able to actually create this functional game and and really just completely unusual game that I never would have dreamed of. So he is the perfect example of you going from I don't know what I'm doing at all to I can create whatever the heck I want. Um, so Patrick and Kyle, why don't you guys show off what you've created? Yes. Hello. Uh, I'm hey. Kyle. I'm Patrick. We're gonna we're gonna figure out the how to do Zoom with two people talking at once, which is always a big challenge. But I think we can do it. All right. So let's start with um. So, real quickly, uh, Patrick and I took the class two almost years ago, which is really wild to think about. Um, we're based out of New York, uh, and I think one of the most interesting aspects about like our relationship is that we met in the Unity course. Um, and we're not only still working together, we have our own company together uh, and are professional game developers. Um, I can't guarantee that will happen to you super quickly if you take the course, but um, it's not uncommon, as I'm sure uh, Evangeline or Willem could probably attest to. There are a pretty good number of people who have gone on to do that after taking this course. But um, Patrick, how should we do this? Do you want to open? Should we open with Dodo Peak and then show the what we did in the course? Uh, or... I was thinking. I was thinking the other way around. Like, okay, maybe let's start do, with. Let's my do thing. that. Yeah. So uh, Patrick and I, we met through working together on the sort of final project for the last few weeks of the course uh, section we were in, um, and the game I think started as like it was going to be Pokemon Snap, but in space. Um, and then became something very different from that. Uh, yeah. So let me boot it up. Um, I don't think I'll be able to play it and talk very well at the same time, but let me share my screen. Uh, nothing but blocks. All right, I have audio off because the music track will just destroy our ability to talk.
So yeah, it's kind of like a we we pitched this game as like a top. What did we? It's a it's a, <laughs> it's a match three puzzle game that plays like an arcade shooter. <laughs> I think is what we were telling people. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so this was like, like Kyle said, this was our final project. And um, to tell you a little more about like Kyle and I, um, so we didn't know each other before the course. And I think like the main reason that I wanted to take the course personally was like, obviously I wanted to learn about Unity and there's like, there's a lot of online resources out there, but I really wanted to like collaborate with other people. Um, and that's kind of one of the biggest reasons I took the course. And I would say like, I definitely got like a lot out of the class. Like I have a business partner now and someone that I collaborate with all the time. And um, from taking the class, like we were just kind of immersed in the playcrafting community, which was like really, really valuable for me. Some people are kind of like, like to work, you know, um, kind of by themselves. But I think there's a lot of folks out there that really kind of like crave like, you know, the collaboration. And if that's you, I think that you're gonna get a lot out of this class. Um, so yeah, so this is Kyle and I's final project. And we actually worked on it for like a while after the class too, just kind of like polishing things here and there. Um, and yeah, so we, I had started working on another project and through like meeting Kyle, I knew I needed someone else to, um, to work on it with. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about like kind of what we did after the class um, as well. But anything else about nothing but blocks, Kyle? Um, Any other interesting things we could I kinda, share? I kind of miss working on this. Um, yeah, it was when, fun. We, it was, it was really cool to like, um, I mean, like we were saying earlier, you are learning also about how like the, the game development process in the, in this course, not just like technical skills. Um, and so like the amount of iterations for what this game was and like the amount of changes to how things control, how things look. Um, that was all yeah, as a simple big, as it is. Yeah. We changed a lot of stuff from like the initial prototype. It used to be just like 2D sprites and um, yeah, we, we iterated a lot, but we, we learned a lot through that process too. Yeah. And like Kyle said, it's like, yeah, it's definitely like one of the cool things about the class too, is it's not just the technical stuff. You're definitely going to learn a lot about that, but like game design and like how to make games is like a whole other skill too. Mm -hmm. And we were able and to also, show this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I saw that some of you had, um, you know, your dream games, which are a little more big picture. My um, uh, my pitch to you is if you want to make bigger concept games, you should work with other people. <laughs> very, yeah. very important. Um, yeah, and so we were able to, I'm just going to die there. Uh, we were able to showcase this at some of Playcrafting's events, right? I'm, I'm not making up that memory. Uh, yeah, like no, we did. Halloween we Expo like, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and that was also just like getting plugged into the community is honestly like one of the best things I can say about uh, this program. Uh, just because, like, again, there are tools and resources for people to learn specific technical things, but being like being plugged in, learning how like actual human beings make games and meeting some of those humans is. And getting um, feedback too is like really and, important. Yeah. That stuff is all, in, in my mind, just as valuable, if not more so. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, this, is, this was our class project. And then, Patrick, you were talking about uh, Dodo Peak. Yeah, so like, yeah, so to give you a little more background about Kyle and I's background, um, I worked <laughs> for uh, a long time as like a 3D artist um, doing visual effects, and Kyle, um, uh, Kyle is an engineer uh, at Google and a, and a, a couple other um, places. So we, we each had like kind of like a little bit of skill set coming in, but we never really like, we never really made like a game. I had like messed around, made a couple like, you know, prototypes of stuff. But like, uh, I would say that like taking this class um, and, and really like um, working with the professors and, and all the other students, like kind of like gave us both the skills and like the drive to really make like a commercial product that we could like make a living from. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that now. Let's see if I can share my yeah, screen. Yeah, let, let me, I think I have to stop. Okay, uh, got it. All right, you're good. Um, so yeah, this this game we did not make in the class, but like I said, like a lot of skills that we learned okay. kind of like led to the success of this. Um, so this is a game called Dota Peak. Um, it's a classic arcade platformer. We released it last fall with the launch of uh, Apple Arcade. I'm just gonna go ahead and play the trailer. Let me turn down my volume a little bit. Okay. Let me know if it's loud and I will turn it down.
Cool. So yeah, so that's um, that's Dota Peak. I think I stopped sharing my screen. Yeah. So um, so basically, probably like a year after we took the class, like Kyla and I had like kind of formed a relationship from like working on our final project, and then um, I convinced Kyle to um, quit his job and to make Dota Peak with me full time, and we basically been doing that um, been doing that ever since but but like I said I can't stress enough that like the biggest thing I think that the biggest takeaway for Kyle and I from the class was just like um, learning how to make games with with other people and like getting that I think really inspired us to kind of you know to, to do what we're doing now um, yeah a anything else Kyle you wanted to add I think that about covers it I mean happy to answer again we yeah Patrick has course, a 3d sure. artist background I have a programming background so for questions towards the end like if if that sounds like your background as a audience person right now like uh, we can sort of speak to that cool awesome great yeah we can um go into a q and a after but before we do that i do just want to go into some of the like housekeeping stuff about this info session um so let's go back to the presentation or i'll just keep it like this um so details just like just to get through the details, um, the class runs Tuesdays and Thursdays. It begins on June 16th. Um, the last day is August 6th. Um, it runs at uh, 3 to or three to 5.30 p.m. on Pacific time. So if you're on the West Coast, um, you know, 3 p.m. If it's if you're somewhere central, it might be 4 p.m. for you. Um, 6 to 8.30 p.m. on the East Coast. Uh, it's two and a half hours, gives plenty of time to do whatever, I mean, there's a lot to learn. So Will will definitely keep you busy. Um, the class itself will take place on Zoom. It's similar to the format we have now. It's obviously a private course. So it's just, it'll just be the students and the instructor in the room. Um, the other difference is to, as a student, you will be on, essentially you'll be in the room with us. Right now, as viewers of this info session, you're just in the chat room, but as a student, you'll be live and in person and you'll be able to see everyone's faces and interact and talk very much as you would do if um, this was an in person class. Um, the instructions on zoom will be sent to you. It's like the same link for every session. So it's it won't get too complicated. Very um, simple to to launch and and you know, take the class virtually. Um, and then I know a lot of you are probably asking like how much this this course is and it is well, let's go to my next, oh, there you go. Um, it does cost, it costs $2,000. That is a, um, it's a, like a, the, the full fee for all eight, for all eight weeks, 16 classes. Um, payment plans are available. We do ask for a deposit before the class begins to sort of ensure your participation. And then we do subsequent payments um, every two weeks up until the, the course ends. Um, if you have any specific questions about what those payment plans are, if you, you know, how much, how much you can afford at the beginning, feel free to send an email to events at Playcrafting and we will get back to you. And when I say we, most likely me. So, um, so yeah, those are like, those are the logistics and the details about the course. And then um, if you have any other questions, I'm sure all of these fine gentlemen can answer whatever, whatever you have. All right. I think I saw, I'm trying to open up the chat. I think I saw some questions in the chat and Q&A. So yeah, I saw at least answer? one earlier. Yeah, so I saw at least one earlier. So guys, yeah, um, please feel free to put questions in the chat or the Q&A section for myself as the instructor, Patrick, Matt, and Kyle as people who have taken the class before or Evangeline as the playcrafting representative. Um, but the one question that I did see already that I'll answer first is from uh, Michael Phoenix. So thank you everyone for taking time to do this. I finally started learning Unity. What are the advantages to taking the course or using um, other online tutorials? So we have definitely already covered some of that, um, but the biggest reason is you're getting um, you know, one-on-one -on -one instructor time. So as Evangeline said, you guys will actually be uh, just like these other panelists here in the room with me. So we're actually going to be able to communicate, talk, we'll be able to share each other's screens. I can actually go into your code, um, run your computer for a second, make changes if I have to. So the biggest thing is you're going to be working with me individually instead of uh, you know just watching a video and then having to Google stuff when you're confused. Um, but yeah, you also get the camaraderie like Kyle and Patrick were talking about. Can I, can I add something to that? Yeah, do it. 
Yeah, so uh, my experience was that I, you know, since I was coming from absolutely knowing nothing, uh, it was super helpful to actually have other people, you know, uh, uh, in the same room, you know, learning that stuff um, at the same time. Uh, and so I, I uh, you know, the, other people had different kind of questions than I would have, but I needed that sort of to jumpstart my, my basic understanding of how Unity works because what I found was after that eight weeks, then I had enough of a foundation that I could then go to the YouTube stuff. Like I asked smarter questions after that, right? I, I kind of knew before I took the course, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And then and then, uh, you know, it's not that I knew everything, but I at least understood how to ask the questions a lot better once I had had that sort of foundation to build on. Yeah, 100 percent. There's also, as uh, somebody else mentioned earlier, the accountability. You know, you're going to come into class and I'm going to say, all right, let's see what you did. And if you're not going to be able to show it off, then you don't feel bad. Um, so we're going to make sure everyone is working hard. Uh, well, there's another question here. Tell us more about the required course materials. Yeah. So homework. So this is one of those courses where I'm not going to give you a grade at the end of the class. Uh, the amount that you get out of the class is 100% dependent on you. So if you would like, you can just come to the classes and do nothing else. Um, I would say that's probably a waste of your time. Um, probably, <laughs> yes, everybody. So probably you're going, you should expect to work one to three hours outside of the class per week. Um, but hopefully it's even more. The way that we structure the class and the way we actually build the code is that you can reuse a lot of the components. So the hope is we go into class, we talk about level design, and then you go home and get consumed in building a bunch of levels and you spend a bunch of time building levels. Um, that's the hope, but you should expect to at least leave yourself an hour to three hours every week. Are there any other course types? Uh, find it hard to reach out to people who actually want to answer the question. Any other course? I'm a little bit confused about what you're asking. Um, is there any other way to connect? Evangeline, are we doing Slack again? Um, we could set that up, yeah. Or, or well, also previously with previous instructors, we had a Discord channel going, okay. um, and that like continued on like way past the course ended. People, you know, they were able to to um, keep connected with the instructors on their games and projects. So um, that's not official. Like we haven't formally talked about it, Will, but yeah, we're open to that if that's something you want to do with your with your students. Yes, yeah. So in the past we've done Slack. I think Discord is um, a great change because I think Slack is it doesn't quite work for this. Um, so yes, we will be communicating and connecting. We'll create a Discord specifically for our class. So hopefully you're going to get some of that like in-person classroom feel. So you can talk about your games even when I'm not looking, or you can reach out to me for help or whatever. Um, not sure what you mean by course types. If you could reiterate a little bit, that would be great. Uh, Christian asks, can you speak more about the instruction on exporting and platforms? Definitely. So we are going to specifically be covering iOS and Android. Um, Unity has pretty all round support for a ton of different platforms. Um, it is generally, it's not always the case, but generally very easy to export to other platforms. Towards the end of the class in those last two weeks, we'll actually be spending some class time to talk about exporting, to talk about getting your app actually on your phone. Um, iOS and Android will be the actual covered ones though, but we can talk about more if you guys want to. <laughs> Anybody else with the questions? Oh, well, there's a question from Alex. Oh. How much coding is involved with this course? Will we use a lot of um, C squared? <laughs> I'm not a game designer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, so there, we're not going to suffocate you in code, but you definitely should expect to be coding. Um, I actually had, it was, I think it was the first course that I taught myself that I wasn't a TA on, and I lost two students because they thought, uh, they thought Unity's claim to fame was that you don't have to code at all. So you definitely will be coding, and you definitely will be coding a decent amount. The games that we have chosen, we've chosen in specific ways so that you don't need to get too intense with it. Um, but you should expect to code, uh, and you should be excited to code because it is an extremely lucrative and powerful tool set. 
yeah, maybe I should take this course because I just admit myself right now. Um, but I did want to point out though, so, um, you know, after this course, people mentioned that they show off their games at different expos. Although, you know, we don't know the future of things as everything's still kind of locked down and in quarantine, um, we have been hosting demo nights and doing that virtually. And that's something that we'll be able to uh, integrate you in seamlessly with a lot of these events that were coming up. Um, if you're familiar with Playcrafting, we also have Play NYC coming up and we have a big announcement coming uh, for that um, TBD. But, you know, that was like our big summer convention that we did, which again, a lot of folks um, from our courses and just part, being a part of the Playcrafting community, they have a hand in. Um, mm -hmm. So something to take note of. Yeah. Um, and before I keep going, Patrick, Matt, or Kyle, if you guys want to jump in on any of these questions, feel free to. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, what you're saying, Evangeline, is another reason this course is huge. Like the community is massive. See, you, Michael. I hope to I hope to see you in the in the course. It's going to be awesome. Um, but the playcrafting community is like actually incredible. Uh, there are tons of people in it. Their events are a lot of fun. They're there genuinely to support the game developer. Um, so you know, another advantage of this course is that you're becoming a member of that community, and you're going to be able to do things like show off your games at events. Um, or, you know, go to future classes. Uh, so Andrew uh, was a little more clear. We don't have, I don't think we have any other planned online courses, but depending on the, how this goes, we'll definitely think about running more. Um, I have actually thought that before. We've run a lot of students through this intro to Unity course. Um, and so there's probably enough people who would be excited for like a 201 or something like that. Um, so that's something we'll talk about. And if you get through this course and really are hungry for more, then we'll definitely um, be open to running another one. I, I had something to add to the, the, um, the playcrafting events. Uh, I found it really helpful when I was uh, when I hit beta for my uh, tone pool app. I actually went to uh, one of these events and I handed out cards and I got a whole bunch of beta testers out of that. And uh, so that that was a real a real valuable um, experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. But they're so fun. I love doing. I love doing expos, etc. Um, will we discuss other aspects of game making, such as narrative design, sound design, marketing, live ops, etc.? Yes, we definitely will. The two biggest things you're going to get are uh, game development, which includes you know sticking sprites on stuff, as well as some engineering, and then game design theory. So we'll be talking about what makes a game fun, what a game loop is, etc. Not going to go super intense into that, but you will get it. Um, we won't really talk about narrative design, but one of the things that's awesome about this course is you can ask me any questions. So as we go, you can ask a couple of specific questions about any of the topics you want to cover. Um, will there be another chance to take this course again? I'd say that's probably a TBD. I don't know if Evangeline, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I mean, this is our first virtual online course, um, but usually the in-person Unity course classes that we do in New York um, we do those pretty consistently, mm -hmm. um, but the beauty of virtual, like the silver lining to all of this and making us all go online is that anyone can take it from anywhere. And Will is actually in San Francisco. So usually we don't, um, he wouldn't be teaching this class normally um, because he is far away from our home base. So if, yeah, there's definitely, um, if the interest is there and this proves to be something that is wanted and more and more people want to take it, then we will probably, we will likely host another one um, later in the fall. I think this one ends in August. So yeah, we'll probably host another one later in the fall if everything checks out. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw another person ask, or he, he clarified about like course types, meaning other mm -hmm. courses besides this eight week one. Um, we've been doing these one-off classes. Um, uh, like play, Playcrafting has been hosting these one-off one classes, just about any sort of topic that um, our instructors feel would be useful for game designers. And so um, to also touch on the question about will sound design, marketing, um, narrative design be mentioned, we, we've actually hosted one-off classes that were solely about those, those topics. And so by taking this, this larger course that like really gives you the, like the meat and potatoes of learning how to create a game, you can then follow that up with more of the like business side of game design. So marketing, we have a, a class coming up on playtesting and 
and making sure to get like to get everything um, to get your value out of playtesting. We had a class on game law, so for people who are who want to take this seriously and like really create a business out of it and you know find out how to work the contracts and everything. Um, that is also we've also offered classes like that, and so we we've, we've noticed the students that joined this introductory course to Unity and really learning how to make make a game, they end up signing on to our other classes because it's. It's like a good flow of um, of really learning how to to make a game from the, the bottom up. So, yeah. Any other questions? I think there was a asking if uh, there will be an in-person San Francisco class. <laughs> sure. I mean, we hope so. Um, yeah. After the pandemic ends, we would love to. We used to have a playcrafting representative in the Bay Area, which was. A little more helpful because he would help you know coordinate all of this but um you know we are based in new york city um so we'll see how that ends uh, and with everything going on we i don't know <laughs> unless maybe we're like social distance and outside taking the course I'm not sure but yeah um are there any other questions for for either will or the the previous students or any like questions about cost payment um signing up anyone having issues on that. Um, I will say we don't have a hard deadline for signups. Um, obviously, you should sign up earlier to guarantee your spot. Um, you know, Will is just one person. And so if we end up having like 30, 40, 50 people sign up, I don't, we're going to have to turn people away. Um, and so because he could only handle a certain amount of students. Um, so definitely take that into account. Um, I mentioned that, you know, as long as we receive payment, then you are enrolled. So you can enroll a day before by making your first payment, either in full or, or doing the payment plans. Um, so yeah, it just depends on how, um, you know, how, how quickly people sign up, but we don't have a strict deadline for that. Um, I guess it's quiet. I don't see anyone chatting. Um, if and no one else has any questions, then I guess we're we're free to go. Anyone else want to say say anything? Will, Patrick, Matt, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I'll say one thing quickly, just a um, about the price because there have been people who are you know nervous about that much, um, about that much money. But uh, to to put it very simply, when you put in money like that, you uh, commit. Um, I think you actually have a better course. Um, if you're spending money than if you spend just a couple of bucks, you know, how many Udemy courses have you bought and then never touched? Um, so yeah, I'd say it's actually a better course for for putting in the money for you and because I better be worth that money. <laughs> so I'm going to step up. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because there's a lot of other like online stuff. But with this, this commitment, it does it, you get more out of it from yourself. Um, another, I just realized I forgot a logistic to say, we do record each session, and so you will always have those to reference, which is actually um, a perk compared to our in-person classes, because we never recorded in-person classes. But with this online class, each session will be recorded, and you'll have access to it if you, wanna, if you want to um, go back and, and rewatch it or like use it as reference to, um, to you know, work on your games and such. So you'll have all 16 classes available for you. All right, I think that's it. I could hang out in here for a little bit and then as people file out. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's it. We hope we hope everyone signs up. If you have any questions, um, either email events at playcrafting. Will, I don't think your contact was on there, but it's totally fine. Just email events at playcrafting and I'll get the question to Will if it's more on the design side because Lord knows I know nothing about it. So. <laughs> Um, but as far as if anyone has questions about like, you know, playcrafting and the, the payment side, the logistics side, please uh, reach out and we will get back to you. And it starts in June 16. So we have about a little over two weeks. So, yeah. I want to see all of you there. <laughs> <laughs> Every all one of you. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Patrick and Matt and Kyle. Um, you all are awesome. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you in person at some expos in the future. Um, all right, cool. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Guys. Awesome. Thanks uh, everyone for coming. Y'all are awesome. Thank you guys. All right. Take the course. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Patrick.